are invited to sample a rich experience of youth and the adventure of learning. Come, share with us a glimpse or two of a year in France, as seen and remembered by over 700 young Americans who have been participants in the junior year in France, sponsored by Sweetbriar College. These familiar landmarks of France are part of any tourist memories, but we wish to share with you a deeper, more meaningful educational pattern. A year of life and learning when one is perhaps 20 years old and in France. A visit to famous Chartres Cathedral is the first of many memorable experiences of the junior year, guided in this instance by Dr. Joseph E. Barker, for over 10 years director of the program and now its director emeritus. An active, interested leader in the management of the junior year in France is Dr. Anne Gary Pennell, president of Sweetbriar College. We start each year in the provincial town of Tours where about 80 young college students from the United States, both men and women, spend about six weeks to learn the how and why of French higher education. But best of all, they learn to know the delightful French way of life in a provincial town to enjoy the historical and literary points of interest. They enjoy and remember such events as this excursion to Chinon on the Andre River. Here the students visit an old monastery, a Romanesque church where some of the Plantagenet are buried. Merely a part of a continuous unfolding of old world culture as we see it in architecture, landscape, customs, legend, life. What fun it is to visit the very castle where Balzac wrote, and a stroll in the huge park that adds elegance and old world charm to the Chateau de Sache. While in tour, the students hear lectures at the Ecole de Droit and the Institut de Touraine on French culture and civilization. It's a wisely planned and guided experience, those first six weeks in Tours. Just as the Loire and Andre rivers join in a great natural panorama, so the students from America begin to feel a part of the quiet provincial life of France. Yet all the while, they prepare themselves for an educational experience quite unlike their previous training in any of the 111 colleges in America from which they come. They long remember sitting for the traditional group photo All too soon, the six weeks are over. In keeping with the zest and hospitality which has become traditional on the part of the officials and citizens of Tours, there's a farewell party for the students. It marks progress as they show new skill in the conversational use of the French language. Then it's off to Gay Paris they go, stopping only for a short visit in the rain and for lunch in Orléans. The way is finally clear to Paris. vibrant excitement in the air and in the heart when college students arrive to spend a year in a city 2,000 years old. They explore the busy, frantic confusion of French traffic and learn early to identify the Paris Opera, a familiar landmark. We comprehend as never before the kinship of the people of France and America when we watch with our student friends an Armistice Day parade commemorating the end of World War I. We cheer the President of France, the Republican Guard, and all the brisk excitement of a parade on the Avenue des Champs-Élysées. 
It's interesting to study French political posters and to listen to the French discuss their problems of government and their attitude toward world problems. It's history in the making with exciting contrasts and similarities to many political traditions in America. There's no one campus for the students to remember. Their campus is Paris. The wide, imposing, tree-bordered streets. The light the animation, the gaiety, the twisting streets in the old town. Their campus is indeed all this, the capital of capitals. Whether they study at the Sorbonne, the Faculté de Lettres, École de Louvre, Institut d'études politiques, or the Institut Britannique, their classes are held here and there over a wide area of metropolitan Paris. Although there is no typical campus, there are the art exhibits, lectures, concerts, theaters, museums. In fact, more things of interest than can possibly be experienced in Paris in one year. Is it even possible for our junior year students to explore all the delightful sidewalk cafes, nor unfortunately even to sample all the food and taste-tempting delicacies for which France is famous? The French, like people everywhere in America, love a parade or a ceremony. Our heritage of common friendship again comes close as we view a ceremony in honor of America's first ambassador to France, one Benjamin Franklin of Philadelphia town. There's music, pomp and circumstance, and always lots of speeches. It's a very memorable occasion. There's American-style recreation in Paris, sports and fun. Winter freezes the lakes in the Bois de Boulogne, and the students go skating and sliding. In this case, a great part of the population of Paris joined them for the fun. So many that special police had to handle the crowds. About 5,137 miles west from Paris, is the campus of Sweetbriar College in Virginia, the old dominion of the United States. Here the planning, the selection of students from colleges everywhere in the United States for each year's group and much other junior year business is cared for. For several years, the French headquarters and offices of the junior year program were located here on Boulevard Saint-Germain. And like all Paris, we remember it best in the spring. Now the headquarters are in the Alliance Francaise on the Boulevard Raspail. Dormitories are needed in neither Paris nor Tours because the students are lodged in French homes to afford a maximum opportunity to hear and speak French, to gain greater knowledge of French life and customs, to know both the land and its people. Every minute is an opportunity to learn. A visit, for example, to the exquisite lakes and gardens of the Palace of Fontainebleau near Paris is a history lesson. It once was a favorite residence of French royalty, and it is also an art lecture come to life since it houses one of the most superb collections of art in all Europe. The people of Paris open not only their historic buildings, but also their hearts. 
They welcome students and really make them feel at home. There is developed a wholesome tolerance for the differences between the old world and the new. But they see the similarities too, and they even find hot dogs for sale on the Quai d'Anjou. What lucky students are these to be able to study 19th and 20th century painting at the huge and world famous Louvre Museum. Just as the classes are held in many places, so all fields of learning are open wide. Here we see the Institut d'Etudes Politiques, a splendid place to study world affairs and political science. Even though Paris is home for much of the junior year in France, it is easy to take a holiday and visit other points of interest. Students are reminded when they stop by the Hostellerie de la Poste in Avalon that Napoleon slept here and enjoyed the fine cuisine too. Each student's memory book presents a different and personal view of the way in which the junior year in France invigorates the mind and uplifts the spirit. Perhaps it includes these picturesque scenes from ancient Avignon. could forget these exquisite designs of the delicately sculptured facade of the 12th century cathedral at Angoulême. History of both the new and old world comes to vivid life when students see the storybook harbor of La Rochelle, where the early Huguenots embarked to settle New Rochelle, New York. Whether it's vacation time for junior year students in the Alps or on the Riviera, there's fun to be had whenever young Americans take a holiday. After all is said and done, it is Paris that probably fills most of every student's memory book, not because of its tourist attractions, but because it is a world center of learning, art, drama, music, science, culture, expressing always the warm hospitality and charm of the people of all France who extend a warm welcome to American youth. Come to France, live and study with us in this foreign land, say the French people, and see it become less foreign and more of a second homeland with the passing of each never-to-be-forgotten day. <laughs>